Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how pulse extenders work. Pulse extenders are used to extend short inputs into longer inputs. That's why it's called a pulse extender. So things such as buttons that give off short pulses. So if I have a button here, and by the way, I have a different redstone texture so that you guys can see the power levels of the redstone. That'll be helpful for later. Anyways, so buttons give off like short pulses. So uh, you click it and it just gives a short pulse. Now wooden buttons actually give slightly longer pulses. So if I were to grab a wooden button, so the wooden button will last longer than the stone button. So wooden buttons give slightly longer ones and stone buttons give shorter ones. So both of them are still pretty short pulses though. So let's say you wanted a button to, to give off like a, a longer pulse. So what you would do is you would take yourself a comparator and you'd make a pulse extender. So pulse extenders are made with comparators. So what they'll do is they, they look like this. So it's just comparators facing in opposite directions. You can extend the line, extending the line extends the amount of time that the pulse extender will, will run for. So if you, the more that you have, the longer it'll run for. So I can just keep on adding and then this one will, will extend the pulse to be super long. So basically what you do is you take these comparators and you put them side by side in opposite directions like this. And then you just connect redstone on either side and then you have an output. You always want to have the output attached to a repeater and that's going to be important to make sure that it continues to work because pulse extenders use power levels and you want to make sure that your output is always on max power level. Otherwise, like let's say you have a power level of two here, you'd get one there and then it would just go to zero right there and it wouldn't continue in the line. So you want to have a repeater at the output so that it will boost the power level back into your system. So if I click this now, these turn on and you can see that some stuff starts to happen. Now the way that it does this is it utilizes the comparator's special property where whatever power level goes into the back side of the comparator will also come out the front so it keeps the power level. So if I have this here and I have a and I have a lever over here that turns on, you can see here is 15, 14, 13 and then 12, right? And then if I feed that into the comparator on the other side, it will also output 12, so it keeps the same power level. And if I were to put another comparator into another comparator, it would still come out 12. They just continue. You can also pass this through a block if you wanted to. Now, the reason that this is important is because comparators actually have a slight bit of delay. So just like how repeaters, even when you don't add delay to them, they still have a slight delay. So if I were to just add a line of repeaters, even though I don't add delay to them, if I were to turn this off, it would take a second and you could see that there's some delay. Well, it's the same thing with comparators. Comparators also have some delay. So if you take a power signal and input it into the back of a comparator, it'll transfer the same power signal, it'll output it here, and then once it reaches over here, so let's say it outputs 12, so this is now 12, then here would be 11 and then it would input back again as 11. It'd come out here as 11. Then when it reaches over here, it'd be 10 and then it keeps on cycling. And then each time it goes through these, that adds more delay to it. And it keeps this thing powered because no, no matter what power level this piece is at, the repeater will boost it so that the output will always, always just stay on no matter what power level. So basically it just keeps cycling around until the power level reaches zero and then it turns off. So if I click this again, you can see that the power levels just keep cycling around. The one way to extend this even longer would be to just add more comparators. So if I were to make it longer, then that adds more delay until it loses another bit of power. So then it will have to cycle, the, long, the cycles will be longer and then it'll lose power slower, meaning that this stays on longer. Another way to extend it without even changing its size at all is to put a block on the output of one of the comparators and then put redstone dust on the other side. If you do it like this, then what will happen is when this outputs into the block, blocks as well as comparators will both save the power level of the redstone. So if I were to go over here and I were to add a comparator so that it would output into a block. So this is power level 12, it goes into the comparator which keeps its signal at 12 and puts it into the block. On the other side, it would also come out power level 12. So one way to make the duration longer without extending the size of the thing would be to add a block here. And what that will do is that'll make it so that when it outputs here, it'll output whatever was in here. So let's say it was 12 
it'll output 12 into there and then this will output 12 back into here so it'll basically turn without losing any power duration so instead of losing one duration on this side and one duration on this side each cycle it'll only lose one duration on this side which makes it last two times longer than it would originally so now when i click the button it'll last longer. In addition to buttons, comparators are also useful for things such as observers, which give a short pulse every time it detects something. So if I were to place a block there, and then I were to remove the block, it would give a really short pulse each time. But what happens when the pulse is so short that it doesn't have enough time to go around before it gets to the other side? Well, things such as observers sometimes have pulses that are too short for even the comparators to extend. So if I were to use this, it wouldn't even be able to extend it. In this case, this is where we would call for the help of a repeater. So what we do here is we move the block back slightly, and then we put a repeater here. Now if you didn't know, while repeaters also add delay, they also slightly extend a short signal. So if we add delay to this repeater, then it will be able to intake the input for long enough. Now actually here, we might even need two repeaters. So we can move that back a bit, add a second repeater with some more delay. Now here, when I activate it, now it'll stay on the entire time. So that's basically it for pulse extenders. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.